we continue our discussion on uh, variation in G. Uh, in the previous two videos, which I'm sure you have had a look at, we looked at variation in G right, with depth and with altitude, right? And now we are going to see how uh, G varies uh, with latitude and uh, shape, and shape, of course, shape of the Earth, right? So let us begin with uh, the change uh, with latitude. So if I uh, draw the Earth, right, not in very good shape to draw, but still uh, will suffice to explain what I'm doing over here. Uh, let us say this is the Earth, and we know what latitude is, right? If I show these two axes, then if there's any object on the surface of the Earth, the latitude is the angle that the line joining the object from the surface of the Earth to the center of the Earth makes with the equatorial plane, right? If this is the equatorial plane, right, angle. And this theta would be the latitude. Right? Now, the objects on the surface of the Earth are performing rotational motion because the Earth is rotating, right? right? So, uh, we know that a body which moves in circle, right? uh, any object which is moving in circle has a centripetal acceleration, right? We know that if an object is performing circular motion, right, along a circular path, it has centripetal acceleration which is directed towards the center of the circle. So if this object is performing circular motion on the surface of the earth, right, because the earth is rotating, there is a centripetal acceleration directed towards the center of the earth. So what, what happens is uh, we have two accelerations now coming into play, the centripetal acceleration and the other is acceleration uh, due to gravity. So what is seen is that the actual value of g, which we can call g dash, right? the actual value of g is not the same as x, the value of g, right? Um, meaning that there is some change in the value of g dash because a part of this g, a part of this g is being used right, for centripetal acceleration or used or supplied for uh, centripetal acceleration. Not the best words to use, but I hope you get the meaning of it that we have what would be an ideal value of g over here or theoretical, not ideal, theoretical value of g that should we should have over here. But part of it is getting used for centripetal acceleration because of the Earth's rotation. And therefore, the actual value which we see over here is g dash, which is different from g. And what we what the other thing that is observed is that on the, on the equator, right, a larger part, a larger part of g is used for centripetal acceleration acceleration therefore the value of g is small g is smaller because larger part is used for surface uh, for centripetal acceleration whereas at the poles a very very small part or negligible part is used for centripetal acceleration so you, we get a higher value of g and that is quite understandable because if if you see the, if you imagine the earth rotating the point over here is rotating in an extremely small circle or is not rotating at all, theoretically, right? Whereas the object over here is rotating at um, a very high speed, right? And it is rotating through a larger circle here that there's nearly no rotation. Therefore, the part which is used for centripetal acceleration over here will naturally be larger as compared to pull. And therefore, we say that G at equator is small or is smaller as compared to G at the poles. Right. So this is the this is the conclusion that we draw, uh, draw from that. In fact, we have an equation. We'll not get into the uh, derivation of this or how to how this equation arrived, but just to get you a better idea, I'm just I'm using this equation which we can be derived. So or theta rather. So G dash is equal to G minus R e omega square cos square theta where theta is the latitude and omega is the angular velocity so if i look, if we look at if i look at this equation right and at equator theta is equal to 0 degree right at equator theta is 0 degree therefore cos theta will be 1 and i'll get g dash is equal to g minus r e omega square and you can see a, a larger value is getting subtracted from over here so g dash becomes smaller Right? Whereas at poles, theta would be 90 degree. Theta is 90 degree at poles. This angle would be 90 degree. Therefore, if I put theta 90 degree over cos 90 is 0. Right? So g dash is equal to g minus 0, which is g dash is equal to g. And therefore, we can we get a larger value of g dash over here. So this is how the value of g changes with latitude as we go from the equator to earth. The other part that we need to look at is shape of the earth. 
Now, the Earth, as we know, is not a perfect sphere. It is flattened at the pole. So over here, this part. Or let me show it over here. If, if we just look at this as the Earth, what is actually observed is that at the poles, it is flattened. I am, of course, exaggerating this. At the poles, it is flattened, and it is bulging out over here. It bulged out over here as compared over here. So if this is the center of the circle, the radius of the Earth, that over here, this radius of the Earth at the poles, and the radius of the Earth at the equator, they're different. We can see over here that this distance is larger, whereas this distance is smaller, right? Because it is flattened, this point comes closer to the center of the Earth. Therefore, Re at the poles is lesser than Re at the equator. And we know gravitation force, right, in case of uh, Earth is inversely proportional to R e square. We know that F is equal to G M E M upon R e square. So inversely proportional to R. Therefore, here, since the distance is very, very small, the gravitational force is more. Therefore, the gravitational acceleration is more. So G at pole is greater than G at equator. And the same thing we observed over here, right, in latitude, and the same thing we are observing over here. What that means is that the value of g uh, at the equator, the value of g at the equator is small, both because of latitude as well as shape of the Earth, right? Whereas the value of g is larger at poles, both because of the effect of latitude as well as effect of the shape. Or in other words, the if the effect uh, over here at the equator, the value of g is smaller, both because of the effect of centripetal acceleration and shape of the Earth. And whereas poles, both centripetal acceleration and shape of the Earth ensure that the value of G is higher. So this is how uh, G varies with the latitude and shape of the object. With this, we have uh, completed our discussion on variation of G with uh, latitude, with shape, with uh, height, and with depth. Right. Uh, the one question that was becoming to your mind is that if the value of G changes from point to point on Earth, uh, how do we define or how do we take the value of G as... 9.8 meter per second square. Uh, what is done is that uh, as the value of G changes from place to place at the surface of the earth uh, and also in going above or below the surface of the earth, we, we go for a standard fixed value right at sea level which is taken at latitude of 45 degree. Right? So at latitude of 45 degree the value of G is 9.80 meter per second square uh, which is taken as a standard value for all calculations uh, which require the use of uh, G. Okay, uh, we have uh, looked at variation of G with uh, various factors and uh, oh, well, the videos that we have done so far are videos that I'm sure you have looked at uh, so far are introduction to the force of uh, the law of gravitation and then how the value of G varies uh, with different factors. Uh, we will continue our discussions, we'll continue uh, our study on gravitation and in the next video we will start looking at a gravitational field, right, gravitational field of the earth and what is gravitational potential. Right. More about that in the next video. Thank you.